OK, um, on to the situation in Queensland, Mark. A doctor in Queensland, for those who aren't aware of it now, uh, gave two elderly patients four times the recommended dose of the Pfizer vaccine. It's quite an extraordinary bungle that's taken place here. The practitioner has been stood down, though. The health minister uh, and Richard Colbeck on the, on the show a short time ago, they have apologised. Uh, what else needs to happen, in your view? Well, we need to get confidence back on track. I mean, obviously, this is a terrible bungle at this aged care facility uh, by a provider contracted by the Commonwealth Government, by Greg Hunt's department. This is a terrible bungle. The two elderly residents of the aged care facility are in hospital. Apparently, they're doing well, which is great, but they're in hospital for observation. But beyond that particular case, we need to get public confidence back on track. We need to get a very clear assurance from Greg Hunt and the Prime Minister that everyone administering these vaccines has done the training. We remember in the middle of last year, at the height of Victoria's second wave, when we had hundreds of aged care residents dying, we were assured by the Prime Minister that every aged care worker had undertaken the relevant training in the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, only to discover through the Australian newspaper that only one in five workers had actually done the training. I mean, the Commonwealth simply has to do better here. This is rolling out very slowly. We've got aged care facilities reporting in New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria that they are on the list to have the vaccine done today, that they had their residents ready yesterday morning because they were told by these private contractors they were going to turn up and no-one turned up. We've had other facilities on the list for this week who've received no communication from these private contractors. So the Commonwealth needs to do better here. We're, we're going too slowly and there's a real hit to public confidence when bungles like this happen in, in the Queensland facility for which the Commonwealth is responsible. There are going to be issues, though. Uh, you know, we, we are, at the end of the day, vaccinating a whole country here. So isn't it foolish to think that there aren't going to be unforeseen issues? Well, there will un be unforeseen issues. The, the logistical challenge involved in this task is unprecedented, certainly in our lifetimes, Peter, but, but it's happened so early. You know, we've been saying for weeks now we wanted some confidence in the training arrangements. Um, I don't understand why these arrangements were put in place so late. We supported the fact that the TGA, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, went through a full process to assess and then approve the Pfizer vaccine, but it's four and a half weeks since... That was approved. We're only starting the, the rollout this week. Uh, and it appears that there are these bumps in the training regime that, frankly, should have been sorted out a long time ago. And just finally, should vaccines be mandatory for aged care workers? Well, I think this is something we should always take public health advice about. Uh, and the, the public health experts from the states and the Commonwealth have come to the view that at this stage, that's not advice that they're giving. Uh, we should continue to monitor that, advice, monitor that advice from the public health experts and act accordingly. OK. Mark Butler, Shadow Minister for Health and Ageing, thanks for your time this morning. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Peter.